Um, what we have in this problem is football being kicked 17 meters per second at 30 degrees. And so it, it follows a motion you're, you're very familiar with, right? I mean, here's 30 degrees, and it goes something like this, and, and it, it lands over here. And, and our question is, what is x? What is x? And you're given nothing else. Alright, so let's go through our process. Yeah. Great. In the x axis, what do I know? What is the velocity in the x axis? It's constant. Good. It's going to be 17 cosine 30. We are looking for the displacement and we don't know time. Y axis. What is y equal to? Zero. Zero. It started on the ground and it ends on the ground. What's the displacement in y? Zero. Now, now, granted, I understand it moves somewhere in the x-axis. Okay, so I understand it's, it's net displacement is zero. But from the y-axis perspective, the thing goes up and it comes down and it starts and stops at the same place, right? And the y-axis, it starts on the ground, it lands on the ground. If you need to think of this being, you know, an xy, you need to think of an xy um, coordinate system, right? Here's your y-axis, here's your x-axis. What is this line in the y-axis? Zero, right? This is zero. And so anything that lands and starts along this line is a displacement of nothing. So this has a displacement of zero, an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Nope. Initial velocity, 17 sine 30. You've got to get the y component of that initial velocity. That's why you sign, right? Sine goes with y. Cosine goes with x. Okay. So you, oh, yes, you y instead of x there. You y. Please burn this into your head. Y, y, sine. X cosine. There'll be only one time in this class that things get backwards. Okay? But I'll set it up to where it's not too backwards. Okay. Y goes with sine, cosine goes with X. Please remember that. Make that association. It makes these problems go so much faster because you're not having to figure out the components. You just do it. Don't know anything about the time. I'm looking for x, that's in the x-axis there, but I'm missing time, right? So I need to get time, where can I get it from? The y, right? So in the y-axis over here, let's use y equals ut plus one-half a t squared. So, yeah, plug in, I got zero, equals, what is 17 sine 30? 8.5. Okay, let's go ahead and let's make it 8.5 t plus one half negative 9.8 t squared. Now, luckily for us, the y is zero, so this doesn't require quadratic to solve. Okay? Factor out of t. All right, this is just algebra from here. 0 equals t times 8.5 plus 1 half 9.8 t. Okay, oh, no, I need to leave the negative in. Thank you. Now you can set up 
everything that you factor. If you don't know if you remember this from algebra, after you factor, you can set up your two factors equal to whatever's on the other side. I get two equations out of this. In other words, this becomes t equals whatever that is, and this stuff over here, the 8.5 plus 1 half negative 9.8 t equals 0 also. You like it. Oh, yeah, the squared goes away. Because I factored out a t. For a second, take this t that's out here, right here, multiply it back in, distribute. And you see how we get back up there. Right? Then it becomes 8.5 times t, there it is, multiply it in again, 1 half negative 9.8 t squared, negative, uh, 1 half negative 9.8 t squared. Okay, so that's factoring out. Now, like I said, two equations, 0 equals t and 0 equals 8.5 plus 1 half negative 9.8 so whenever you factor, you get two equations out of that. Okay. Um, the way you probably learned that idea in math is you had, you know, whatever, ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero, and, and then you factor this guy and you got, you know, some number. Um, I'm just going to make stuff up now x squared plus, excuse me, not x squared, x, x plus 3 and x plus 2, right, equal to 0, and so you factored it out. Remember doing that? Okay. And then, to solve this, you could set these up as two separate equations. 0 equals x plus 3 and 0 equals x plus 2, and you get your two separate answers, right? Whenever you factor something, you can set up two factors equal to whatever it is over there to solve. So that's all we're doing over here. Okay? All right, so uh, solve this guy for me, please. What does t come out to be? I'm sorry? 4.73? 1.73. That sounds better. Well, factor it out, right? This is the other factor, t, right? That's it. So t equals 0. So there are two times that y equals 0. When t is 0, t is 1.3, which on our picture should make sense to you. At this point right here, what is your time? 0. So at t equals 0, y is 0. And apparently, at this point, t equals 1.73. Okay? And y equals 0 again. Sorry? Yeah, I got 3.7. Uh-oh. Right there, somebody? It's that. Oh, boy. I got 1.7. All right, hold on. Calculator. <laughs> Uh, All right, let's solve this. Move 8.5 to the other side. Negative 8.5 equals 1 half times 9.8 gives you negative 4.9. Now what? Divide both sides by negative 4.9. T equals. Okay, there it is. 1.73. Okay, so there's our two times. Now, getting back around to what we're going, we're looking for the displacement of the x. So sometimes problems get long and you forget some things. So scroll back up and you look back at the top of your paper and see what you're going for. We're looking for our x variable, right? We're looking for the displacement of the x axis, how far it travels. Okay? In the x, it's always constant velocity. V equals x over t. 17 cosine, whatever the 17 cosine 30 is, equals x over, I can pull that time, now that we found from the y into the x, 1.73.
and you find your displacement, how far this football went, to be what? 25.53 meters. Let's deal with significant figures. How many sig figs do you get? I see two. Right, I got two here, three there. So this becomes x equals 26 meters. 30.0 means 3 sig When you said that uh, angles have infinite sig figs, does that mean that whatever the second, second was, like say it was 17.2374 down here? Yeah, okay. Now, technically angles don't have infinite sig figs. you got to factor them. Okay? But um, we have a bad habit of just writing 30, that being it, okay, as teachers, and forgetting that I've got to give you correct sig figs on there. And so if I do that, ask me about it, ask if I mean just one sig fig here, or do you want me to ignore the significant figures at the angle, which then means, like you're saying, please go with the number of significant figures found in the velocity out for it, and the velocity that goes with it. Okay? Um, questions about this problem? You work it the exact same way. The only difference here is the initial velocities, right? You got to divide into components. Velocity cosine the angle for the x, velocity sine the angle for the initial and the y. Okay? Um, work another one. What is the maximum height? What is the max height the football from problem one is going to reach? So, max height means I care about what axis? Y. Okay? I care about the y axis here. So, in the y axis, just kind of rewriting everything, I've got A equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared. U equals, it was what from up there? 17 sine 30. 17 sine 30. Um, please notice acceleration negative, initial velocity positive. They have to be they have to be opposites because the acceleration is going down and the initial velocity is going up. Right? If you have them going the same way, then something really doesn't make sense. Either the football was kicked down into the ground. I don't know how you do that exactly and let it travel down that way, normally it bounce back up, right? Um, or Gravity all of a sudden reversed itself, and the football is accelerating up into the sky. Right? So please make sure that they're opposites. Um, what is the final velocity here? Good. Zero. Y equals question mark. Final velocity, my y axis at, ma at maximum height is zero. I don't care that stuff's going on in the x. That's the beauty of projectile motion. You can divide this thing into two completely separate pieces and solve them separate. Recombine the end if need be. Or, if all you need is one axis like this one, ignore the other one completely. What equation do you want me to use? V squared. V squared equals U squared plus 2A. Let me substitute a y and press. Okay. Zero squared equals whatever this uh, 17 sine 30 came out to be, right? I'm sorry? 8.5. Okay. That quantity squared plus 2, negative 9.8, y. What does y come out to be? What's the max height? 91.85 sig figs. We only got two of them, so 92 meters. That's very high. Yeah. So looking at this right now, I'm going to say that's unrealistic. I'm guessing we use cosine instead of sine. 
That might be my guess. So let me uh, erase that. I'm sorry. Do I need to work that out for here? Fourteen point seven sounds a whole bunch more realistic. So in essence, because of that, you're getting a higher number there. Um, fix it manually. It's common sense. Stick a negative on it outside of that. Yeah, necessary. Sure. Alright, so let's do the alpha. Alright, um, this is 8.5, right? Let me move it to the other side. I have negative 8.5, and uh, the square happened before I moved it to the other side, right? So I need the negative on the outside. Is that negative? It was what? Let me, let me just go ahead and put that, put that in. Negative 72.25. All right. Whenever you move it over, right, you subtract it over, so it's negative on the other side. Right? Equals 2 times negative 9.8 comes out to be? Negative 19. 0.6. Swap. Divide both sides by negative 19.6. Three point one six.